developed our, uh, our elastic curve formula and uh, our slope formula. And I'm going to do that from the equation that we just derived, the second derivative of the elastic curve equals our moment. And you'll recall um, we get our moment equation from the shear and bending moment diagram. And I'll go through that. Um, I'll go through the whole series real quick shortly. Um, so but basically, um, in, in very simplistic terms, um, I'm just going to go through the flow so that you get the idea. And this is, it seems, this seems very, very complicated at first, but I think that um, it follows a very similar pattern from how you get from load, then to shear, then to moment, then to, um, then to your, the slope of the elastic curve, and then eventually to the elastic curve formula. And so hopefully you'll be able to see that. So we integrate in x. So we integrate um, the second derivative. And, we, and how do you integrate that? Um, I, I, showed it, I showed it over here. I, I, bring, the, um, I bring the EI over to, to simplify the right-hand side over here. So, so I brought the EI over. And so basically, we're integrating the second derivative. And that's going to equal um, e, EI times the first derivative. Uh, we're at the final position, whatever that is. If, if this is, if these are your limits from initial, initial whatever to final whatever, it's basically from um, initial slope to final slope. Um, we get, um, we get. Okay, so we get EI times the final slope minus EI times the initial slope, and basically that's the. Um, this is, the, this is the idea that I'm going to use um, in order to derive our uh, constant of integration. And so, so we have, so, so we have our modulus of elasticity. Uh, our modulus of elasticity times our inertia times our slope, because we derived that earlier, how dy dx equals theta if it's a small angle. And that's going to equal um, our, our moment, the integral of our moment in x plus some constant. And um, I, I haven't seen this anywhere. This is kind of something that I developed. And it's really useful for me to try and figure out what this constant means. It always it always seems to mean something. Like when I was going through, um, what was it, the rectilinear motion, this, this constant always means something. When you're doing your shear and bending diagrams, this means constant. And it's, it's usually an initial condition. Like it's your initial velocity, or your initial moment, or, or whatever, whatever you're dealing with. That's generally what it is. That's a good place to look. And also, it can come from thinking of integration this way. Um, and so our, our constant it comes out to be modulus of elasticity times moment of inertia times our initial angle. And um, you can see that from up here. And so, so this, is, this is how we're going to determine our, uh, our equation for the slope once we once we do this integration, then we can bring the EI back over, divide everything by that, and that's going to be our uh, our slope in, in x, our slope in terms of x. And then, so if we if we go ahead and, and integrate our our first derivative, we come up with um, a y of x, uh, an equation in terms of y of x, and that's going to equal the integration of this right here, the term that we just, that we had to, um, we had to find first. So if we find this first, then we integrate that in x, and we get another integration constant. And you'll see that this integration constant comes out to be um, our 
initial y value uh, times ei. And it's, it's, I think that's fairly simple. And now I'm going to go over uh, how to solve a, a simple problem. We're, we're just going to use um, we're going to use the beam that we, we drew up earlier. It's a simply supported beam with a load coming down. Actually, we'll do a, um, a constant load, I think, that makes a little more sense to start out with. So this will give us a, a, uniform, a uniform load to work with. Um, if, you, if, if, the load, if the load varies, uh, throughout the length of the beam, then uh, and this load is W O and it's constant. But if this load, if this load um, is is not uniform, it, it basically if the equation of the elastic curve is is not continuous, then you have to break it down into segments, and um, that takes a little bit more work. But it's the same idea behind it. Um, same thing with the shear and bending moment diagrams. To determine your moment equations, you have to break it up into segments. And so we have our reaction at A, our reaction at B. Uh, we have our load. So the first thing that we have to determine is our shear. Or I, I like to start with the load, um, our load equation. And then the second is to determine our shear. And then we determine our moment. And once we have our moment, we can determine our angle. Uh, and we call it our slope. Once we have our slope, we can determine our elastic curve. And so as long as we as long as we follow the methods that we've learned up until now, there should be not much new to learn. Uh, obviously, we're learning slope and elastic curve, but really we're using the same ideas to determine slope and elastic curve as we've been using throughout. And so, uh, first our load equation. Our load equation is W O. It's a constant. Um, so then our shear. Um, you recall. So um, we need to determine our reaction at A. Um, in order to find our initial shear. And our initial shear is going to be if, our, if the length of our beam is L. Um, you recall that the load will be concentrated right at the center. So it's going to be um, basically the A is going to take half the load. So it's going to be W times L, WOL over 2. And then as, as we move along the beam, there's going to be less shear because as this load's coming down, there's going to be a shear going up. And we remember that when shear goes up, it's negative. So W uh, minus W of 